of me. Everyone say, I want you to shout and say, Covenant night of me. Covenant night of me. Now let us take it one to go. Covenant night of me. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, tonight is your night of me. I don't care the name the doctor has called it. Your healing is right now. But do not forget that we are serving a covenant keeping God. In the book of Psalm, chapter 89, verse 34, he said, His covenant he will not break, nor alter his words. Our God is a covenant keeping God that will not alter his word. Covenant means an agreement. Our God has established an agreement for us as saints. And this agreement has been saved with the blood of Jesus. What is an agreement? We will play our own part and he will play his own part. Once you are able to keep your own part of the agreement, God is ever faithful to keep his own part of the agreement. Because he is not the man that he should lie. Whatsoever he said he will do, he will continue to do. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. From the beginning, the man ahead have been the plan of God for man. No, now listen, there is a difference between healing and divine health. Divine health simply means you won't even be sick. Because it is the man that is sick that is supposed to have healing. Is it not true? Yes. But the plan of God for us is for us never to have sickness. Yes. Sickness is not a native of our kingdom. When God created Adam and Eve in the garden, there was no sickness. There was no love, sickness. Yes. And did not create hospital. You see that? So in the garden of Eden, there was no hospital. Why? Because God did not make provision for that because there was no need for hospital. Sickness came as a result of man's sin. Man disobeyed God and chose his own God. Man chose Satan to be his God rather than Almighty God to be his God. And from the day man chose Satan to be the owner or the ruler of his life, that is how sickness came. So sickness came as a result of man's carelessness in obeying Satan the devil, who is an enemy to God. I told you that the sin of Adam and Eve committed is called treasonable failure in the law. Selling a kingdom that belongs to God to an enemy, Satan the devil, and attracted a curse unto themselves. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 17 to 19, Genesis chapter 3, 17 to 19, I read from 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, you know, when God asked Adam, Adam said, the wife you gave you, gave me the fruit. And when he asked the wife, he said, it is Satan. You see that? It is an act of carelessness. Can you imagine that? Asking Eve, Eve said, the serpent. Asking Adam, Adam said, the wife you gave me. In other words, Adam is not accusing God. Because it is God. God who helped him and gave him a covenant. And since that time, Tina, God do not find wife for people again. Praise it that Lord. It is you man that look for the wife. You know? Because I don't accuse God. Man. He said it is the wife you gave me. And that is why the Bible says he that findeth a wife. So now it is you that will find a wife and present it unto God. I don't know who's listening to me that is looking for a wife. And you have been saying, God, bring you, bring her. God will not bring the wife and come home. It is you that will go and look for a wife. Church, I just want to say, yes, sir. Because the man he brought for Adam, Adam used it against him. He said, The wife gave me, caused me to eat. 
and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast heard unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cause in the ground. I see it. Cause in the ground. So the ground was caused because of man. Cause in the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat all the days of thy life. 18. Thoughts and tisto shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of house of the field. You will eat of house of the field. 19. In the sweat of thy face, you must have sweat. In the sweat of thy face, shall thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was that taken. For thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. You see that? He said, Adam, you will do like this before you eat. Because you are dust, you are going back to dust. Man was a dust in the flesh. But spiritual human being, man was before the fall. So immediately after the fall, man became more of dust. Because the spiritual aspect of the man who was cut off, man became original flesh. I told us last time that carnality means when your flesh is dominating the spiritual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see that Adam became more carnal, so to speak, than spiritual. And you return back to dust because dust originally in your bed. So this begins to fall apart when Adam chose. That is the basic lesson. Mosquito that you see now had been there in the garden of Eden. Mosquito wasn't created immediately after the fall. Mosquito was also the mosquito in the garden. The mosquito that was not sucking blood started sucking blood. This one they are calling typhoid. There was nothing like typhoid. There was nothing like malaria. There was nothing like kidney. There was nothing like any sickness in India today. It was as a result of the sin. Is the custodian of every sickness. Every sickness has roots and is traceable to Mr. Who? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is not responsible for any sickness in your life. He is not responsible. Listen to me. Every sickness comes to keep. Every sickness comes to do As small as a headache is, if you allow headache, headache will keep. Because the mission of sickness is to kill. It's one of the ministries of the devil. He coming to kill, to destroy, to steal. That is his mission. But Jesus has come tonight to give you healing. To give you what? Receive it now in Jesus' name. So the coming of Jesus brought redemption. Now listen to me. Before God created heaven and earth, the plan of redemption had been there. What am I talking about? God created the man and gave the man ages the right to choose. The right to do what? Choose. Yeah? Man can choose right. God knows. And man can choose wrong. God knows. If man choose right, then man will continue to enjoy in the in them. He continued to fellowship with man. But if man fall or fail like he failed, he made the provision of Jesus even before creation. Praise the Lord. So the coming of Jesus wasn't because man said and God said, what will I do now? Eh, eh. What to do? Have a plan. So the coming of Jesus have already been planned even before he started creating man. So when man fell, the coming of Jesus was already in place. So the coming of Jesus wasn't what he told Isaiah. That was Isaiah he told. Who will I send? And he will go for us. That was the method of Isaiah's calling. That was when Isaiah was called. Not when Jesus 
Jesus was asked to come. It wasn't meant for Jesus. Who will I say wasn't for Jesus? But for Mr. Isaiah the Lay prophet. And Isaiah said, I am ready. Send me. A lot of people say it was Jesus. It's for Jesus. So the coming of Jesus wasn't there. Who will I say any? It won't show. It had a plan. At the appointed time, God said he saw Jesus Christ. Who came to redeem us? Now listen to this. Listen to this. Man was under a curse. When Jesus came, he redeemed the man from the curse. Sickness is a curse. It's a curse. As a result of the sin of Adam and Eve, which Jesus came to redeem us. What is redemption? Redemption means when we are slaves to Satan, Jesus came and paid with the price for our sin. Listen to me. The sin that Adam and Eve committed is a sin that requires the blood of an innocent, sinless man. When Adam and Eve committed that sin, there was no innocent, sinless man anywhere qualified one. Most people in hell, praise the Lord, because the angels there don't have flesh. God can't send angels because angelic beings are heavenly beings. They are created for the heavens, not for the earthly. So it needed an innocent sinner man who will be a mortal man in the flesh and will not commit sin. A lot of people are saying that God has already created many people before he created Adam. If actually God had created many people that are not from Adam, he would have used them to pay the price of Adam's sin. But because no man was created, it was Adam who committed the sin. Every child that Adam born is automatically a sinner. Praise the Lord. Because the sin of Adam flows. It is Adam that gave the death of every man of earth you see today. No other human being. Because if there were other people of earth who did not commit the sin, God would have used them to redeem man. But what Jesus, what God did was to send his only begotten son who came and took the form of a man. The Bible said he no more than himself. Though he was a God. The book of Hebrews chapter 2, if you begin to read from the verse 5, said, Let this man, this mind also be in you, which was in Christ, who is a God. God did not make himself equal with Almighty God, but to the form of a servant. So, Jesus pre existed in the heavenly places. He had been in the heavens before he came down and took the form of a man. He was half a man and half a God on the earth. But functioned well as son of Adam because he took this natural flesh and passed through every what every human being on earth passed through, yet had no sin in him. But he was meant to be a sinner on the cross of Calvary. So that he redeemed us, he paid a price that we cannot pay. The death that we are supposed to die, the sin that he did not commit, he chose to be a sinner and die the death so that we can be redeemed. Church, I know what I'm saying. Yes, no wonder Apostle Paul said, I am crucified together with Christ. I live, not me only, for Christ lives in me. So, when they crucified Christ, and it was the one that was crucified, this is what Jesus did for you and me. That crucifixion was the crucifixion that I'm supposed to pass through. But he passed through it for me at no cost. All I have to do is to believe and accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. Once I do that, I am the justified. I am no more a sinner. My brother who was giving testimony said, 
I don't know if you are to say I'm a sinner. No, you are not a sinner. You are a righteous man. You are a righteous man. Wow. Not of works. Not of works. You are righteous because the word of God says so. If any man is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things have passed away. If it's your spirit man that is born again, not you, not the physical. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. So it's not whether your nose, your hand, your leg, but it's your spirit man that is born again. We are born again, children of the God. How? Because we have ascended Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. Listen to me. Sanctification. Our holiness is different from righteousness. Righteousness, listen to me, in the act of being in right standing with God, standing and right. If you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, you are already standing and right. You are in the right place with God through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. But holiness, you must walk it out. You are going to study the Bible. You are going to apply the biblical principles for you to be holy. Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, I am holy. You are walking there out. Every day you are walking out. Talk to man talking. Yes, sir. If I'm talking, shout to me. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written. Cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. You see that? Everyone that died after the death, that Jesus Christ, that it has been written. It has been written. In the book of Exodus, it has been written. Even in the book of the Jordan, it has been written that any man that the hand of a tree like that is under a cause. And Jesus chose to die like that. To carry the cause that me and you have. That is an eternal cause that Jesus came and carried and restored unto us eternal life. Eternal what? Life. A life that have no cost. Have no end. Have no cost in it. A cost free life is what Jesus exchanged. You know what I'm saying? That cost life is no more with Jesus. It's no more with the Jesus. I know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That cost life is no more with you, Jesus. Jesus has redeemed us. He took it and returned it to Mr. Devil. Praise the Lord. He is the owner of that hair life. He handed that life to Mr. Ru. Devil. Church and Church again. Yes, sir. In fact, he said, I hear. I hear, sir. 14. That the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I see that. The promises that God promised Abraham, we are to receive it through faith. Through what? Faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And what is that promises? God entered a covenant with Abraham. A covenant of health and a covenant of prosperity. What is that covenant? Genesis chapter 12. From verse 1 to 2. Genesis 12. God entered the covenant with Abraham. And the covenant is one with me, and I will bless you. You see that? So there was a condition for that blessing. The condition is that you must walk with me. Genesis 12, 1 to 2. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kingdom, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Two. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and will make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. You see that? A condition. Walk with me, I will bless you. And Abraham walked with God. 
And what happened? God blessed the people. Why? Because God is a covenant keeping God. What we mean? I will bless you. Abraham played his own part. Did God play his part? Yes. Abraham was very rich in cattle and was very rich in silver and gold. Genesis 32. Abraham was very rich in silver and gold and in what? Cattle. Why? Because he worked with God. And in return, God bless him. Wonderful. I love that. So there was a condition for the blessing. A covenant is a conditional requirement. A conditional requirement. A conditional requirement for the blessing to come. A covenant is an agreement between two persons. When it involves God, it becomes a holy agreement. An agreement between God and man is holy. But we are sure that God will never fail his own part of the earth. The contract is a contract. Praise the Lord. Church, I get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. For you to receive your healing, you must enter a covenant of healing. A covenant of healing. That is a part you will play to receive your healing. This healing, Jesus has paid for it. But there is a condition. I told you that most of you say salvation is free. Well, Oyeli was said, if salvation is free, it was so on the cross. But for now, there is a condition to live. If you say you will not give your life to Jesus Christ, you will not be born again. That is the condition. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten world so. That's that's the condition. That whosoever believeth in him. What about if you don't believe in him? If I tell to live a life to Jesus Christ, you say, Pastor, let's pray 21 days prayer. Are you working in the covenant? No. The covenant requirement is that you must say those confessional prayers after being receiving Jesus in your heart. That is the covenant requirement for eternal life. As small as that prayer is, as small as you can think that believing is, you must do it. And we all do it. And that is the requirement for us to live in that kingdom. In it tomorrow. As we keep abiding in it, praise the Lord. From the Old Testament to death, God's will for us has been divine health. After God found Mr. Abraham and walked with Abraham, all the generations of Abraham we are blessed. Until when Jesus died and made us part of Abrahamic covenant, that the blessings of Abraham will come to the Gentiles by faith. Now listen to me. I'm sure I am talking to the world now. Those of us view me in all the social media platforms, listen to me. You know, Israel just stayed the world with the Palestinian world. And many Christians are supporting the Israelites. Most of them supporting the Israelites say, hey, they are people of God. Listen to me. And that the Palestinians are not people of God. You are making a mistake. The Jews are no longer the Jews in the Palestinian territory. No. If any man is in that place and have not found Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, they the Jews don't misunderstand the Bible. Every child of God that is born again become the real spiritual Jews. We are talking about the spiritual Jews now, not the Jews of the old. So if somebody calls himself a Jew and is not born again, is he a Jew? No. Jesus told them, if you call yourself the strong of Abraham, do the work of him. Praise the Lord. Now, if a man is in the Palestinian nation and that man is born again and he's a Palestinian and he's born again, therefore the Jews should kill them. No. Praise the Lord. If somebody 
is in Palestine, if somebody is in Iraq, is in Kuwait, and the person is born again, is your blood brother. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There shouldn't be war with you. Where are we going? Now, let me tell you something. Our God of the New Testament is not a God that supports the world. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Our battle is a spiritual battle. Please, we must condemn war to its entirety. Not when the Jews are fighting, they are throwing missiles. You are here clapping your hand, they are your brother. How? And therefore, if a Palestinian is throwing bomb, now the Arab world, they are clapping hand for them. Nobody is qualified to die. Are you getting what I'm saying? Christianity is a message of peace. It's a message of uh, peace. May we carry the peace. Amen. Never you throw bombs, please. We are not serving a God that wants us to throw bombs. Follow after peace. Follow after what? Peace. That case that they are fighting, they should have settled it amicably. It's a matter of and adjustment. If Jesus we are to be on the earth, will Jesus have thrown bombs? No way. Please let us get this this way. Let us get this this way. May we never, in the name of Jesus, support any war. Whether the war is in the Palestinian war, please, our God hate war. There are mature way of handling crisis. May we follow that way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Problems of life is lack of understanding. Look at people clapping hand because the Israelites they have bombed and we are you are here clapping your hands for them. And maybe the Muslims did they too, they kill all the children that you clap hand. So those hands we are clapping, what are we saying? We are encouraging wars. Should the war turn to war? They want so no. Look at the number of innocent, helpless people that we are killed in that war. And we are thinking that God is in support of that war. No way. Please, no way. Producing dangerous weapons to kill innocent people. Look at how many children that we are killed in that war. All the Palestinians and the, the so-called Jews there. Please, we, the body of Christ, under my own headship here, we are not in support of that kind of a war. We don't like it at all. And it is highly condemnable. The United Nations should rise up to make sure that such a war will never occur again. And how they do that? By seizing those weapons of mass air destruction. Like they are doing in African nations and others. They should also do so to the Palestinian war and to the Israelites there. Those weapons of mass destruction should be seized so that man will not use that against his fellow man. Please. So that we can have peace on the earth. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26 said, in, in part, he said, If you diligently hear the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to the commandment, and keep all the status, I will put none of the diseases which I brought to the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he did. You see that? A commandment. If you will obey and serve me, the sicknesses that came to the Egyptians because of their disobedience will not also come to you. Why did this sickness come to the Egyptians? Because Pharaoh said, Who is God? Pharaoh challenged God. Can I not challenge God? No way. Pharaoh said, Who is God? And Pharaoh drowned in the sea. God did not kill him, it was his sin that killed him. Our God is not a killer. He's not a killer. He has the power, praise it alone. He can do or do. But killing is not his nature. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Killing has never been the nature of a God. But man attracted him. Imagine a man saying, Who is that a God? In that case, with the power of God, who show up? Who show up? May we never entangle. With the things that will bring God's anger over us. Because when you 
and that was anger. The anger comes and you don't pay more for it. Touch, am I talking? Yes, sir. So it is impossible to work in the covenant and be tormented with sickness and disease. It is impossible for you to be a covenant child and be dead in sickness and be dying with demons of sickness. It is impossible. Because there is a God that will not allow that to happen. Whenever sickness shows up, our God will keep them and will keep them out. Yes, they may want to show up. But there is a power that will fight them stand still. And that power is already at work in your life. Amen. John Tiger now said, Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26. Exodus 23, 25 to 26, 25 said, You shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread. Look at that. You will serve, and He will bless. You will serve, and He will bless. In other words, you will not serve, He will bless. So, if you claim to be serving Him, while we are not serving Him, you will not see the blessing. The blessing will only come from two true servants. Two servants. They are those that are invited for the world blessing. You will serve and he will bless your prayer. What is your prayer here? He will give you food. He will make sure food giving come. He will ensure that your food is blessed. And when your food and water is blessed, you will never be sick. That's what you say. So, you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take away from the midst of you sicknesses and diseases. And none shall suffer his poor courage or bury in the land. And I will fulfill the number of your days. What is he saying? You will live long on earth. You will not die now. Yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. No. You will not die now. You will not die now. You will live more than hundred years. You will not die now. That is he said. And he will fulfill the number of your years. Which means, even if they take your name to any Jewish shrine. They will not do the same. Amen. I just want to say, yes. you must live long on earth. Amen. But there is a God. But there is a condition. You must serve Him. You must do well, serve Him. You must not joke with Him. Some of us are jokers and we think we are servants. Many who are a joker that call yourself a servant, you will get the message. Some of us are intelligent servants. We are serving him for you. When you serve the Lord with the way you to that, you will not get the blessing. Because he is all seeing God. There is nothing he does not know. All my services he knows. All your services. Even before you think of doing it, he knows. So God knows to serve him. God knows those that are not also serving him. May we be serious with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to this. Healing and divine is our redemptive right. Is our right from redemption. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5. Isaiah 53, 4 to 5. Surely and really for he has brought our soul. Yet we experience tricky. Speaking by God and afflicted fire, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We were healed. So he has healed us already. He is not trying to heal us. All you need to do is to locate that covenant of healing and begin to walk it there out. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Come on. I wish you understand what I'm saying. You 
had been healed. The second was repeated in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He said, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree? That we, having death to sin, may be for righteousness, by whose strife we are healed. We are healed 2,000 years ago. And even now, yeah. now look at it. Everything you need by God, God has already provided it. So, can you ever say, Yes, sir? He said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, He said, According to his divine nature, had given us all things that pertains to life and world, God has given his divine nature. So, he has already done it. All we need is to search it out and begin to obey, apply the biblical principles. He begins to work for us. Praise the Lord. If you are here, things are not moving the way you should. Check the way you serve. Because to every man that serves God faithfully, he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. If you seek him, you will find him. Because he is offered for you. Matthew 8, verse 17. Matthew 8, verse 17. That in the book of him, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took away our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Away our infirmities and by our world sicknesses, as I have already said, is the fulfillment of what Azariah said. So, by his words, we are here. Amen. You know, um, it doesn't matter the kind of pain you are having, the truth of the matter is that you are here. Amen. Amen. Pastor, do you know what I'm saying? My waist is paining me. Well, that there is a waist pain. It's not to say you are sick. That you have waist pain is the fact. But the truth is that you are ready to Which report do you believe? I believe in the report of the Lord. That he said in his word that by his time I will have you. I am healed. Not just that I am, I am healed 2,000 years ago. I am only claiming my healing, but enforcing my healing right. John Chaiman, are you ready to answer? Yes, sir. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor, healing is mine. Healing is mine. I am not struggling with it. I am not from him. It is my right. It is my right. But if you believe in that, shout the biggest in here. Amen. Psalm 91, verse 10. Psalm 91, verse 10. There shall be no evil before thee. Neither shall any prayer come near thy dwelling. Come near thy dwelling. I tell you again. There shall be no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil is permitted to come near your dwelling. Are you going to say? Yes, sir. I tell you again. No evil is permitted to come near you. A precious, no wizard, no demon is permitted to come near your house. Are you going to say? Yes, sir. Many years ago, one woman came to us and told me and my wife, said, whenever he looked from his door, from her door, sorry, that he normally see light, a very big light in our domain. A very big light, I said, I know it. Why? Because we always invoke light in our dwelling. So darkness can never come near you. And if they come, they will lose Zion. Can I get to say? Yes, sir. Our covenant practices will be 
Lord is our covenant. Is our covenant. Our covenant practices is what is covering us. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. But unto you who fear my name, the son of unrighteousness shall arise with the healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as cow so tall. We are to grow tall. Why? Because the son of righteousness is covering us with his wings. We are to grow tall. We are not to grow short. Tell your neighbor you must grow tall. You must grow tall. Shout and say, Never! Never! You must grow so tall. So tall. You never understand what it means to grow tall. It means living above circumstances, living above situations, living above challenges, becoming a healthier overcomer. That is the realm you are climbing to this city. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore him to the I will heal thee of thy loose, said the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no one seeketh after. Listen to me. So many of you they have abandoned you. So many of you they have rejected you. So many of you they have called you good for nothing. But tonight there is a restoration. Amen. Those who see nothing good in you, they shall come and bow for your God. Amen. If you believe this is for you, shout the loudest. Amen. This is Zion. Who no man seeketh after. But tonight, your time of laughter has come. Listen to this. God's perfect plan is not for us to be continually in need of healing, but to live divine health and well being. He said in 3 John 1, verse 2, said, I wish about all things. As your soul prosper, you will prosper and be in divine health. He don't want to listen to this. God don't want you to be a man that will always want to heal, but He wants you to go above Him. He wants you to be a man that not even need Him because sickness won't even come. That is what it means. And this this come when you enter covenant of Him. When you enter covenant of what? Really? John am I talking? Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. My son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my son. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are right to those who find them. And head to all their flesh. You see that? The word of God is the mercy. So there is healing power in the world. Everybody say there is healing power. There is healing power in the world. In the world. Yeah, he said the word of God is a medicine. So when you receive the word of God for healing and apply it, the word heals you. I tell it again. When you receive the word of God for your healing, the word of God heals you. So when you are sick, what do you need? You need what? You need the word. Well. There is a word for every problem. Say, I have. I like that. Every problem of your life needs a word. When you encounter that word, because inside the world of God, there is a healing. There is what? A healing. The world of God is the container that contains God's power. And there is power inside the world. So the secret of God's power is the world. So when 
man was sick, go to the wall that contains him and apply it. That's how the healing comes. Don't forget that our God is a covenant keeping God. Psalm 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the word that has gone out of my lips. God said, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Are you getting it? That is a covenant talk. That is a covenant talk. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. See that? And the book of the Bible said that God is a God that will surely keep his head covenant. He said the covenant of the redeemed is that the covenant of day and night. No matter how powerful the devil claims to be, the useless devil, no matter how powerful the devil, is there any witch that can make the Lord to break? No! Praise the Lord! So that I will be will not break. No. Can any witch go to the No. Can any witch go to the day of the day? No. In as long as they will always break, it means that the covenant giving call must always play its own part. Listen to this. When your own part of the covenant is kept, then must always play his own part. In this case, we are talking about covenant of healing. All you need to do is to play a whole part of the world of the covenant. Listen to this. Very important. Please pay attention to this. There are no special people with God. There are not there are only people with special insight. What do I mean? Listen to me. There is nobody here that as they were born you, they born you with dollars or naira in your hand. Is there anybody like that? No. no. Is there anybody here that as they born you, they born you with Bible? No. So no special person. What makes us special is the secret things we have found from the scriptures. The covenant work, that is it, that we have found and we apply them. You shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall do what says you. So it is the truth we find out in the scripture that makes us so special. Are you getting what I'm saying? Without Jesus, we can do nothing. If there is any special man in the kingdom today, it is the making of Jesus in the life of that man. Otherwise, no man will ever boast of being special. David, a friend of God. Why? Because David initiated a war with the Lord and he became a friend of God. Abraham was a friend of God. How? Abraham initiated a quality war. Brothers and sisters, it is our quality war with the Lord that opens up our destiny. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. If you must make it in life, you must locate the covenant. And initiate the covenant work. Why? Our God do not joke with covenant. The Bible is our covenant book. Old covenant and new world covenant. And you know something? The Old Testament has been embedded into the New Testament. So the Old Covenant has been embedded into the New Covenant. Jesus said, A new covenant I have given unto you. The covenant of love. All the Ten Commandments are embedded into one thing love. You know what I mean? All things work together for good to those who love God. There are people that God don't joke with. He doesn't joke with his lovers. Therefore, make yourself a senior lover. This. It is the revelation of any part of God's covenant 
that puts you into supernatural command. I tell it again. In the revelation that you have on God's law concerning any of his covenant that puts you in supernatural command. All covenant workers are supernatural men and women. Church, am I talking? To create or to initiate the covenant of health with God. How do I begin this covenant of health with Eshadai? Number one, you must live on the word of God. Everybody say, live on the word. Live on the word. You must learn how to live on the word. Living on God's word is the principal key to every and every little covenant of total health of total health living by the world what is living by the world do you know what the world asks you to do no matter how stupid you take it in a look listen to me I must to Paul said if our message is foolish it is only foolish to those that are perishing but unto us it is the power of God of the world, salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is no foolishness in the gospel. Every living of the Lord is for our own profit. At times you may not enjoy it. But I tell you, all his leadership is for your own profit. Number two, the love of God is required. First John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. First John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. 14 says, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brethren abides in death. 15. And you know that no other has eternal life abiding in him. You see that anybody that is a hater is a man. All of you here that hate people, you listen to me, you are in heaven with people. You are not a friend of God. So what do we do? We must live a life of quality love. Praise the Lord. If you are not loving your fellow brother that you are seeing, how can you claim you have love God? How many of us have seen God before? I have entered to get to heaven and I have seen God. No of us have seen him. We only know we love God by faith. But when you don't love your fellow man, how then do you see you love God? Did you just love God? He will accuse you of hating him. And you will ask him, Daddy, how do I hate you? And he will say, It is because you will have loved the whole man. Every hatred is a sin before God. Now listen to this. The Holy Spirit in the world will fire the love of God into our heart. Which empowers us to live a super health life. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live a super health life. Number two, supernatural addresses. Supernatural addresses is a death and life are in the power of your job. If you are to live a divine health, you must learn how to talk health, how to talk health. You must claim him at all times. If you must live in total hell, you must speak total hell. You must talk hell talk, not death talk. When you speak death, you will soon die. No man that wants to live long on earth talking death. No. When you talk death, you talk fear. No wonder how the devil threatens you with death. You will not talk death. Because death is not in our kingdom. 
So I mean, I'm not giving all the spirit of God. Now listen to me. One way the devil in this manifestation injects spirit of death into the life of people is by bringing the so-called false prophets who tell you will soon die. Imagine you going to a church and somebody is telling you you will die and you believe. That what will you believe negative false? What does the word say? The word of God says you will live and not die. Therefore, anywhere they have prophesied death unto you, standing in this altar as a genuine prophet, I cancel it. Amen. I said I cancel it. Amen. In that name of Jesus. Amen. Every hour of death. Amen. Every prophecy of death. I cancel that. Of God's power. God 
intimidating contender that contains God's power. As mosquito carry plasmodium, so God's word carry power. Carry what? Power. Can I get one say? Yes, sir. So God's word is the secret place of God's power. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit is the channel to eat. Why God's word is the source? He said, you will access God's power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The Holy Ghost is the messenger and the interpreter of the world. He is the interpreter of the world. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. He says for and he them and deliver them from their destruction. He sent his word and he need them and deliver them from destruction. Finally, what is in this world that he is and keep healthy? What actually is in the word of God? That heals and keep you healthy. Number one, there is divine life in the world. Everybody say divine life. Divine life. The word of God carry and carry life. And when life comes, death comes. You know, sickness is death. And God's word carry life. So God's word expels death. It puts death on the world. And usher in life. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. The one that has speak unto you, they are spirit and they are all life. So the word of God is life. We see the light now. Brothers and sisters, we are not trying to be 